Okay, so I'm in the middle of my hot cam installation, and uh, this is for a YZ426F because I'm tired of using this. So I'm going to install this. Um, when you're installing this, you want to make sure that your motor is at top dead center. And if you follow the manual, it tells you exactly how to get to top dead center. But it doesn't tell you if you're 180 out or not, which you need to know. Because if, if you are 180 degrees out, you're going to adjust it wrong. It won't be on the compression stroke. So you want to take both these plugs out. I put this one back in because my engine was leaking all the oil out. But I don't know if you can see that in there. You probably can't. But you want to line it up with the line with the stationary fixed slot in this plug hole. Now a good way to tell if you're at top dead center is if you look, it shows you in the manual the E and the I and the dot is level with your cylinder head. Now we got the E and the I and my dot is level with my cylinder head. Now you can also tell because if you come around the back these lobes will be pointing out in the opposite direction of each other. Okay. This is also a good time to check your valve clearances. Um, you need to remove your timing chain tensioner, which I did. And um, you also should mark with a sharpie or a paint pin where the dot meets the chain link. Because when you take the cam out, there's going to be a lot of slack in the chain and you might get it off one tooth when you put it back together. I also zip tied my cam gear to my chain so that I don't lose timing of my intake cam as I'm doing uh, my exhaust cam installation. I, I don't need to take out my intake cam because my shim size was already good. So, Okay, so you want to loosen the four bolts that hold your exhaust cam in in a crisscross pattern and when you pull this out there's a little half moon circlip almost retainer type of thing in here so you want to make sure that doesn't fall into your motor when you pull it out so be very careful when you pull it out okay so this is the little half moon clip I'm talking about it sits on your cam like this Sorry, my hands are oily. It goes in your cam like this. And when you pull this cap off, I mean, it sits in the cap in the little recessed part right there. If you pull it off too quick with too much force, it's going to fall in here. And that's going to ruin your day. So, once you have your cam out, you want to take out your decompression, which is right here because you can't get your bucket out because the decompression's in the way. Okay, so this is with my decompression shaft just hanging here. I don't want to pull it all the way out yet because I gotta take the radiator off and I'm just trying to install my cam. So, with that out, you can pull out your uh, shims. Now, it's very smart to uh, put a clean cloth into the hole so that you don't drop anything in there as you're doing this. I usually use a magnet to get these out. This is just a kitchen magnet off my fridge, but it's pretty strong. Because when you use a magnet, you get both the bucket and the shim. Now, you really want to remain organized as you're doing this. So, I usually make a little diagram like this. This is with the motor facing me is how I pulled things out and in their order. So this would be my exhaust side. And I don't, I'm not going to have anything on my intake so I'm not doing my intake. But if you were, you would, would want to do this. And then this is my other one. 
the actual shim is this. This is your actual shim. Okay, so I installed the uh, hot cam and checked my clearances, and I got um, 0.35 on both of them, which is 0.15 off. So I pulled the shim out, I measured it with a caliper, and came to the conclusion that it was a 180, because I can also see a little 8 there. So figure what we need we go to our chart and we see um, we see that I measured 0.35 and the installed pad is a 180 so we want a 190 to make it where it's supposed to be and if it's still not where it's supposed to be, put in a 195, and so on. Okay, so this is everything back together. Um, timing chain tensioner is back in. The decompression, decompression lever is back in. Um, this is not necessary if you have a plug, because the whole reason we installed the cam is to get rid of this. But um, I don't have a plug, so I'm using that as a plug. Turn your crankshaft by hand a few times, and your marks should still line up with your head. Um, if you use the Sharpie to mark the notches to match the chain, after you spin your crank, it's not going to line back up because the sprockets on your cam are not the same size as the sprocket on the crank so even though they don't even though if you put sharpie on it like here and there on the chain and you spin the crank and it doesn't line up it's still correct it's just that the sharpie mark is somewhere else in the chain pretty much you just want to know if you're level with your head and a good way to check just to make sure that you're right is look at it from the back and if the cams are facing out like they did when you first uh, started then it's correct and also hot cams recommends that um, you put Loctite on your cam cap screws so I did that because I'm sure they know what they're doing and um, make sure to also tighten it in a crisscross pattern and the shim size that I ended up with was a 200 which is just a 2.00 and I started off with a 1.80 and I got my clearance of a 20 which is what hot cams recommends